Hello everyone, this is uh, Mr. Luttrell. Uh, as I promised, I made a video here to, uh, again, just kind of reintroduce the SBA student, uh, sorry, standards-based assessment that we've been working on for the past couple weeks, but uh, just kind of giving a good overview for um, those, who, those students who maybe have been on quarantine or have missed multiple days or even a week plus or two weeks plus. This is something that you can use uh, to kind of help guide you through the project. Uh, and you can then continue to work on it and then submit it to me and still get still get full credit. Uh, and those who are kind of stuck in different spots of the project, again, this video is also to aid and help them also uh, to help maybe alleviate uh, or answer some of the questions you may have or alleviate some of the problems you're having as well. Again, everything starts with the teacher page guys here, Fountain Middle School. You can find it by staff. Scroll down and click on Mr. Luttrell. This is the teacher page. There's our weekly schedule. Um, Scrolling all the way down there, I wanted to point out here, this birth of our nation, this is the project website that we are using for the SBA um, district assessment that we're finishing up this week. Uh, by clicking on this link, it'll open up the project website. You'll need to then hover over learning experiences and we are in project four, LE4, Acts by the Crown. How you know you're in the right place is obviously the uh, propaganda piece here showing the first uh, resemblance of Lady Liberty uh, being cut to pieces by the British taxes, this is known as the Stamp Act. Again, this is kind of the uh, forefront for what this project is about. You'll be creating your own propaganda piece, um, either supporting the uh, British or against the British. So you're either uh, basically a loyalist, that's someone who's for support of the British, or you're a patriot. Uh, which is so sort of going against the British and the British crown. So uh, from the image here, just kind of working our way down, there's our state standards. Here's the instructions for the project. Again, are you a loyalist or are you a patriot? The project itself, guys, is, is learning more detail about one of these specific topics. If you were to pick one of these topics for which you're going to research and do more learning about and basically trying to master the topic of one of these um, events, taxes, laws, or groups of people uh, during this, this uh, you know, very turbulent time in, in American history. Uh, basically, you know, like I said, this is the birth of our nation here. This is where uh, these American colonists that are British subjects, many of them um, are starting to question the British crown. This is after the French and Indian War, uh, which the British crown now is trying to implement more taxes and laws on the colonists. Uh, because they're broke. They've, they've been in war for some time and they need money. Um, and this is the first time in over 170 years that the British crown has actually ever placed extra laws and taxes and duties on these American colonists. So they're, they're, they're starting to kind of freak out. So again, we're just trying to get that, that point here, trying to figure out why and what caused the American Revolutionary War. And these were all reasons why. So again, you had to pick one of these topics and based on what you pick, so if you picked, uh, let's say this is the first one here, uh, taxation without representation, okay? Right down here is a uh, resource in the same order, taxation without representation. You would actually click on this, and it would open up a document. And this would be a document that I have found. Uh, most of these are secondary sources with primary resources built within. Your job would be to read this document. At the same time, in your OneNote notebook, you would find the document called Document Review. And the Document Review page would look something like this. You type the topic you picked here or somewhere in the document. And then you'd have three questions here. That's kind of all lumped together, but I separated them here. So I could focus on these specific questions. And you could even go in greater detail, guys. You could actually go into your here and actually delete um, some of these words. So if you chose, if your topic you chose was no taxation without representation, that's the one you chose, then you could type there, what is no taxation without rep representation, okay? And you can now make your question more specific to take out this, these generalities, because I had to create it this way so to accommodate everyone's topic. So you can actually delete that and make it more specific. So that's just something that you can do to each one of your questions. So you really narrow down your focus. But again, what you're doing here is you're reading through this document here. You're reading through the document. 
And as you come across something that answers this question, all you have to do is simply copy and paste that section in a document review and paste it right in. That's how simple that is. And your goal is to probably get two to three um, direct quotes. And all you're doing is you're pulling a direct quote from this resource, and you're just plugging them into these spaces here for each of these questions. That, again, these are be examples or citations that will be answering the question. And you just keep working your way down. And over here in the left column, you're simply typing in where you found it, paragraph one, paragraph two, page two, paragraph one, stuff like that. And at the very, very bottom, you're going to pick the best citation that answers each one of these questions, and you'll use that citation, that quote, in your citation section of your summary here. And these summaries become important here for the document review and for the video analysis because these summaries are going to be what you use to make up some 80 to 90% of your speech, which will be your final product for this project. That's why it's important these, these documents have to be completed. Now, we worked in this in class, uh, two days for each, as well as two days at home. So if you do the math there, uh, it's four total days per each one of these activities. Uh, we worked on these for about a week and a half. Um, they were due sometime or, you know, last week. So um, video analysis was the same. So if you go back to our project website here, after you're done with the document review, you scroll down further, and there's a list of videos here on the project website. So all you have to do here is click on the video, watch it. As you're watching it, you're answering the same three questions. And you're just typing in responses. And of course, you can then collect the best ideas over here in the left column. You type the time that you found it, two minutes, 10 seconds, one minute, 30 seconds, wherever you found the answers. And that way you can always reference them later if you have to. But then down here, you write a summary again, answering the same three questions. And you're then picking the best evidence or best resource uh, or the best citation or answer for these questions that you've, you've typed in here. And then write your summary for your citation section. But these two summaries are very important. These two activities need to be completed because it's allowing you to dive deeper into the project, learn more about it, and also help start writing your speech just like that. All right. Lastly, then, we've been working on uh, last week going into this week, uh, which is, this was due Tuesday, was our rough draft or and our project plan, project plan piece. This is some examples of what I already started working on. Uh, by adding images to the project plan. Um, this is, I'm creating my own visual aid, and I'll show you examples of how I created my own visual aid here momentarily, okay? But you're gonna add images here. The best way to do this is to find, just to just get a Google page up and then type in your topic. So if your topic you chose right here, taxation without representation, you copy that, and you go over here, it's a good starting point, and you paste it right in. All right, and then by doing this, I would select images, select tools, go to size, large. What this does is it gives you great images that have high pixel ratings. This means the images are going to look good. You can shrink and modify them, and they'll still look good. They won't look distorted or bad on your project. And if I like this image right here, I click on it, and then over here, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to right-click, copy. And I'm going to go back to my OneNote notebook here, click inside the page, hit Control-V to paste the image in there. And then from there, I can modify the size of the image to fit it in the page. And I'm trying to fill this box up with lots of images so I can have a lot of different options to use and consider for this project. All right, and in this section here, you're going to start writing your rough draft. You're going to use your video analysis and your document review summaries to come up with this section here of your citation. But you are going to have to address a new writing prompt on the same topic, though. This is to help you get your speech moving forward. So, again, this, the writing prompt is, why should people of the American colonies join your political cause? You're going to restate and then, of course, answer that. Are they going to be joining the Sons of Liberty? Or are they going to be joining the pro-British movement, uh, being a loyalist to the British crown? You get to choose, though, based on the topic you pick. Then you're going to give three reasons why and just give three simple reasons. These three reasons are going to be based on the three topics that you've chosen here or the three things you wrote about here in your document review and video analysis. Just give it a short title, okay? And then from here, you're going to then plug in those citations with a transition word for each. You're going to introduce each citation, where you found the source, where it's at, and then, your, of course, your direct quote or paraphrase statement. Your explain section needs to be typed here. Again, I want you separating this all out to make sure it's, it's correct, it looks good. Uh, 
you're going to be restating basically this, but you're going to say something along the lines of this, this proves, this shows, this demonstrates, something along those lines. All right, once the project plan is done, then you are ready to move on to finalize your project. And that's where then you're needing to go back to the project website. So again, just below the topics is another uh, section called web-based tools. This is in a very important section because it has all the project tools or web-based tools you're going to need to use to build your visual aid. The first thing I'm going to show you is PictoChart. PictoChart, you sign up using your, your school Google Classroom login. Mine already logs me in directly when I click on it. But this is where you're going to start to build your final project, your visual aid, your piece of propaganda. I've already been working on this one here, so I'm going to show you this one. And I'm going to show you how simple and easy this is. Uh, with this tool here, you're going to be able to build a poster. So I chose the topic of Sons of Liberty. Now, these are all images that were in and or saved in my project. So what I simply did here was I just simply added them in. So I'm going to delete these all here to show you again how quick and easy this whole process is with PictoChart. Okay. So again, I chose a background. So I can choose any background you want. These are all stock backgrounds. If you want to go with a wood background, whatever, you want to go with some gray pattern or twirlies or whatever. I like the bricks because the bricks look very unfinished, almost unprofessional, very old school, like something from the colonial time. So I like the brick pattern. Again, I'm making a political poster here, and I'm in the favor of the Sons of Liberty. I'm a patriot. I'd be one of those that would be going against the British crown. So with that, I'm going to go here and upload my images, and I've already uploaded these images by clicking Browse, and I've gone to my folder that I've created on my desktop, find these images that I've saved, and I've also removed the background of some of these images, so I have just people. Now, background remover tool is also available right here. You can click on this, and you just simply upload the image you want, and what it does is it removes all of the background, Then you'll resave the file in your folder. All right, and then you can then upload it onto here. So let me show you what I came up with in this regard. So I actually found a modern day picture of a like an alleyway. I like this because it still shows a lot of, even in modern times, it shows a lot of disregard to laws. I mean, look at like all these tagging and spray painting the walls. And so obviously this is not happening during the daylight hours, but at night, after hours, there is a level of defiance here. And I like this image here. It's more modern time. It may or may not be in Boston, but it represents basically what this issue was that American colonists were going through. Um, they were having to be secretive in this movement of against the patriots, or against some sort of the British as patriots and being a part of the Sons of Liberty. So I like the image. And what I did is I simply found this image here, which shows, I'm just dragging and dropping here, and again, this is one of those things I removed the background on, and I'm putting people in here, uh, which are from the uh, content from the era, all right? I can make this this kid almost like stand on top of this stool, which is pretty cool. In this image here, we see British soldiers attacking a patriot. So again, uh, representing the abuses or the atrocities that uh, the Sons of Liberty would want to have considered and people to look at. So they maybe would join the cause on the Sons of Liberty side, again, the anti-British. I found this little cool slogan and poster here. This is a very famous flag uh, and kind of symbol of the time period. So I slapped that in my poster. I found a cool little teapot. It says no, tea, uh, no stamp back. Again, another tax or something that the, government, uh, the British passed. Not my topic per se, but again, kind of relevant. And kind of put it on this table here. And, and this is just kind of what you're doing. You're just finding images and just kind of putting them together on your poster. In this section down here, you're able then to put your final draft of your speech right there. And you're done. What you're doing is you're making a specific propaganda piece. You're creating a visual aid, a poster that you can hand out to people. They can read your speech. You can obviously give your speech. And it's going to all represent the same thing. You're either going to be for or against the British crown. And you're creating propaganda to either gain people to join your side uh, or, uh, or um, you know, just further... Uh, verify or validate they want to be on your side as a patriot. So that's the whole point of this project here. And again, it has to be tied specifically to your topic. So this is just an example here of how yours can uh, yours can also look. This is the official flag of the Sons of Liberty, so I like that. So I put that in here as well, kind of just keeping the brick a little bit in there. And then, of course, you can put your speech over top of that. Um, you can put in some graphics here, put in a shape, put in a square. And this is where then you can lay your um, speech right on top of that. You know, there's text boxes right here. You can add your different text boxes in and put those in there and then copy and paste your text in. You can put a title in here. Um, 
I mean, again, these are all just examples of how your project can look.